Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? Edgeman Cinedrop coming to you guys today with another deck tech. So, today we are taking a look at another standard deck, and it's also going to be a budget deck. So, it's going to be a lot less costly than most of the decks that you may see in the Tier 1 meta. Um, but, uh, the deck that we're looking at today is Mono White Odric's Army. So, this is going to be a deck that revolves around Odric and a lot of humans. So, uh, we're going to break it down, but before we get to that, if you guys have any suggestions for decks that you would like to see, uh, please leave them in the comments down below. So, uh, this deck is going to be a little bit more costly than the other budget builds, but it's still definitely a budget build. Um, most newer players or players that don't construct a lot of decks will think, well, you're running a lot of rares. Isn't that going to pretty much put it into being a deck that isn't a budget deck. Uh, but in reality, all of these rares are really cheap to get. Um, the most expensive card in this deck is Champion of the Parish, but it's still a fairly inexpensive card to get. It's not really that expensive. Um, but all in all, this is a really fun deck. Uh, it's more budget-oriented, so we're going to take a look at it. So the first thing that we're taking a look at is the land base, and it is incredibly straightforward. It is just 23 basic lands it's 23 planes so we're gonna line these up down here for you guys to see and you can take my word for it that there's 23 of them here I'm not gonna count them out for you but I'm just gonna kind of neatly stack them so you guys can see them for the duration of the video all right so that's the land base just 23 planes and now we're taking a look at the rest of the deck, so this is the important part. So, uh, the first card that we have here is Champion of the Pair, so it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Champion of the Pair. So, ideally you want to get him really early in the game and he can become very, very big. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention about this deck is that it's going to be a rotation-friendly deck for the Scars of Mirrodin block and uh, M12 rotation, so all of these cards are still going to be in standard after that happens. So, uh, you guys can have some fun with this and know that nothing's going to rotate at that point, but uh, place it a champion of the parish. Put that off to the side here. Uh, next we have Doom Traveler, so 1-1 one, one for 1 white, another human. Uh, whenever he dies, put a plus 1 plus, or a plus 1 plus 1, put a 1-1. One, one white spear creature token with flying onto the battlefield so he's going to be good against removal and board wiping and stuff like that so even when he dies you still get a 1-1 back out of him so play set of doom traveler next we have Micaeus the Lunark so we're running two of these and I have my shiny ones but they're completely unnecessary you guys can have regular ones um, but Micaeus is really awesome because he's X amount of mana and one white is a zero zero and uh, he enters the battlefield with X amount of plus one plus one counters on him so however much um, X amount of mana you put into him and he taps to put a plus one plus one counter on himself or um, he taps to put a plus one plus one counter on each of your creatures by removing one counter off of uh, himself first so this is going to be an awesome way to redistribute plus one plus one counters on all of your token creatures and uh, make them become bigger. So it's kind of like having an anthem effect in a, in a sense. So we're running two Micaeus to buff up our creatures. So we have two of them. Uh, next we have Crusader of Odric. So I wanted to keep the Odric theme going on here. So it's a three drop with uh, power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. So we're doing quite a decent bit of token uh, production in this deck. So um, she can get pretty big pretty quick. So we have four Crusader of Odric as a three drop. Next we have Thraben Doomsayer, another really cheap rare card that you can find um, online or at your local shop. Probably in the junk rare bin. Um, he's a two two four three mana, one generic and two white. Uh, he taps and puts a 1-1 one, one white human creature token onto the battlefield and with Faithful Hour, as long as you have 5 or less life, um, other creatures in control get plus 2, plus 2, so that's kind of cool. Um, but realistically, you don't really want to drop that low with your life total. But uh, we're running two Thraben Doomsayers. He 
puts out a lot of uh, a lot of tokens really easily. So that's why we like to have him. He just synergizes well. So two Thraben Doomsayers. Uh, then we have Odric Master Tactician. So again, the foils are unnecessary, but uh, I'm running three of him. Uh, he's also a fairly cheap rare card to get, uh, but he's a uh, legendary creature, 3-4 power toughness, and he's a 4 cost, so 2 generic and uh, 2 white. He has first strike, and whenever Odric Master Tactician and at least three other creatures attack, you may choose which creatures block this combat and how those creatures block. So um, you basically can just rearrange how your opponent's stuff is going to block. Even, even if it's something really undesirable, your opponent has to block that way. Um, or you could just choose to have your opponent's creatures not even block, so you can just attack unanswered. So that's one of the cool things about Odric. So we have three of them in here to do some combat tricks, and it's not hard to get a lot of creatures swinging with Odric with the amount of tokens that we make in this deck. Just kind of straightening, straighten things up here. Um, next we have Gather the Townsfolk, so now we're getting into our non-creature spells, so we're running a playset of Gather the Townsfolk. Uh, put two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens onto the battlefield, Faithful Hour. Uh, if you have five or less life, put five of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. Again, we don't want to get to that point. But uh, if we do, it helps. So we have a playset of that. Works well with uh, Champion of the Parish. Uh, unfortunately, Midnight Haunting does not because it's not humans. But this is also another token generator card. And it is really awesome because it's at instant speed. You can cast it at the end of your opponent's turn. Um, put two one, one uh, white spear creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield for three mana. So another way to get more creatures out there and synergize and just build up a what I like to call an Odric army, as the name implies of the deck. So, uh, playset of Midnight Haunting. Uh, next we have Intangible Virtue, so kind of to help out our tokens that we're making in this deck. Uh, I'm actually only running one of these in the decks, um, but you guys can switch that around. You can play it to how you like, but um, this card isn't necessary. It's not that you have to have four of these to make this deck work, but uh, if you get this one out there, even as a one of, uh, if you see it, it helps. Uh, even if you don't see it, it's not going to hold you back. Uh, the The main thing about the uh, about all the tokens is to just kind of work with the rest of the stuff that's going on. But Intangible Virtue helps out um, with the tokens you already have out there. It gives in, in, it gives them plus one plus one in vigilance, so it's always nice. Uh, then we have Increasing Devotion, so it's a five cost sorcery. Put five one one white human creature tokens onto the battlefield. Um, and if it was cast from a graveyard with its flashback cost, which is 7 generic mana and 2 white, um, put 10 of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. That really never happens. The flashback never happens. But for 5 mana, getting 5 one ones is awesome. So we have that. We're going to put that up here. Got to make some more room. Uh, we have Faith Shield. So we're running a play set of this. So for 1 white target permanent, you control gains protection. Um from the color of your choice until the end of the turn, Faithful Hour, if you have five or less life, um, you and each permanent you control gain protection from the color of your choice until the end of the turn. So um, this is a nice way to protect your stuff from stuff like Bonfire of the Damned. Um, also give your creatures protection so that they're not blocked from a certain color. Um, any type of damage inflicting, board wiping stuff like that, like Slag Storm while it's still in standard. Um, Pillar of Flame, uh, even Oblivion Ring, if your opponent tries to use it, you can uh, gain protection from it and make it an illegal target. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do with Faith Shield, but mainly it's to keep our important creatures to stay alive. So we run a playset of it. It's a it's a really overlooked uncommon, um, but it's a really amazing one in aggro builds and um, any deck that you just want to keep a certain permanent or creature around past removal. So playset of Faith's Shield. And the last card that we have in here is Oblivion Ring. So we're running three of these as removal. Uh, removal isn't really hugely necessary, but it's always nice to have a little bit of it. So uh, for three mana, um, whenever Oblivion Ring enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent. And whenever Oblivion Ring leaves the battlefield, return uh, the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So 
Uh, the only downside is if they can get rid of it, they get their card back, but Oblivion Ring is good removal because it exiles stuff instead of just killing it and making it die and go to the graveyard and possibly triggering abilities, but Oblivion Ring is always awesome. So, three of those. So, like I said, it's a more budget-oriented build. Uh, most of you more expensive players would understand that because you've played with more expensive decks and stuff like that, but take my word for it, it's really cheap to make, it's really fun, uh, really aggressive as well. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this deck deck, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate that. And be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe for more Daily Magic the Gathering content. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful, fun-filled Magic the Gathering day.